Well, political tensions on Earth between Russia, China, and the United States have spilled into space, with China currently assembling its own space station and Russia planning on doing the same. International cooperation in the thermosphere is deteriorating. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson talks to Walter Isaacson about the U.S. approach to space diplomacy and the spectacular findings of the James Webb Telescope. Thank you, Biana and Administrator Bill Nelson. Welcome back to the show. Hey, thank you so much, uh, Walter. It's always a pleasure to be with you. So the news this past week or two is how the Russians are continually saying, all right, they're going to pull out of the International Space Station in the next few years, partly because of the situation in the Ukraine and the bad relations. What do you really think the status of that is? Well, of course, the United States government position, and President Biden especially, is that uh, it is horrible what's going on in Ukraine as a result of President Putin. But we've actually almost been through this drill before, and it goes back to the middle of the Soviet Union in the Cold War, when in the midst of that hostile standoff of nuclear weapons, we found a peaceful connection with then the Soviets, now the Russians, in the civilian space program. For in 1975, a Soviet spacecraft rendezvoused and docked with an American spacecraft, uh, and the crews lived together in space. And that has continued all the way to this day where we built the International Space Station together starting in the late 90s after us visiting the Russian space station, Mir. And uh, today, that professional relationship, friendly relationship between cosmonauts and astronauts, it continues. We've got uh, three Americans on the space station now and three Russians, and I think one Italian. So, uh, you know, if you were listening to this show and you wanted to send a message about how this is still part of international co uh, cooperation, you know, what, what message is there? Uh, what I've been saying all along, even under the, the former regime, and that is uh, we both uh, continue to act in a very professional and friendly manner in running the International Space Station. Uh, we, the United States, intend to keep the station going until 2030, until we can then turn over to a commercially built space station, the low Earth orbit activities, so that we, NASA, can concentrate uh, our activities on the program on the moon, getting ready to go to Mars. One of the contracts you have for this potential new space station in 2030 is with Jeff Bezos. You have a contract with Elon Musk's company, SpaceX, to send uh, American astronauts to the current space station and beyond. Uh, are those the type of entities that will end up be building commercial space stations that NASA will contract and use? Uh, yes, and many others. Uh, there is a lot of commercial activity. Another company called Axiom uh, is actually sending uh, uh, private astronauts to the space station now in order to acclimate them to uh, the beginning of a commercial space station. So, uh, But there are many other companies that are doing this. And the commercial program doesn't stop at low Earth orbit. We have commercial landers going to the moon with NASA scientific payloads that we basically uh, contract for their service, their lander. It's much cheaper for us, but it's information that we need. For example, we've got one that's going next year that's going to dig at the South Pole to see if there's water underneath. That's our instrument digging. If there is water, there's rocket fuel. Hydrogen and you're talking about the South Pole of the Moon. South Pole of the Moon, that's correct. China is building its own space station. I think in the past couple of weeks, they sent a module up. Do you think we're in a race with China, or do you think you could do with China what your predecessors did in 1975 and say, let's work together 
uh, on uh, space exploration? I wish we could, and Lord knows we've tried, uh, but China has been crickets. Uh, they are very secretive. Uh, you saw that when they sent a, a 23 ton empty rocket that is uncontrollable. Uh, it's tumbling back to earth and they won't share any data about where it's going to land. Uh, they've done this twice now. Uh, plus, you go back to 2007, they sent an anti-satellite rocket up, blew up an old satellite, put tens of thousands of pieces of space junk up and threatened a lot of people's satellites as well as the space station. Uh, they're very, very secretive. You've written, you said, we must be very concerned that China is landing on the moon and saying, it's ours, stay out, that that's going to be a problem if they get to the moon, back to the moon, I should say, first. Uh, well, what are we going to do about that? And why haven't we signed the UN protocol about the commercialization of the moon? Well, for example, uh, I mean, I could go on and on. Uh, uh, China just is unwilling to respond. Um, so the the protocol that you're talking about, I, I think you've got it a little uh, miscommunication here. It's called the Artemis Accords. It's something that we started. Uh, it's a set of principles. Uh, that are common sense principles. 22 nations have signed up to it, most recently Saudi Arabia. Uh, and what the principles say is, our reasons for going to space are peaceful. When each other is in trouble, we're gonna come to help each other. We're gonna have commonality of instruments so that if we got in trouble, we could exchange we're going to uh, look to uh, surfaces of celestial bodies, to your question, the moon, and for peaceful purposes that can be used by all. Now, do you remember what China has done with the Spratly Islands? Suddenly, uh, they've taken them over. This is our new territory. You stay out. We don't want that to happen on the moon. What could they do on the moon? Do you think they could uh, sort of colonize it and use it for military purposes? I, I can tell you what they could do. They could go to the South Pole of the moon where the resources are. And they could land and they would say, this is our exclusive territory. You stay out. And uh, we're not going to let that happen. But that's what I've said. I haven't said they're going to do it. I hope that they can be talked out of it. But I am certainly painting the scenario that that's something that they could try because they've already done it. In other words, we don't want the South Pole of the Moon to become the Spratly Islands. So suppose we get to the South Pole of the Moon first. So, you know, in the next few years, you've got a program to do that. What do we do when we get there? We make it open to all international uh, participants, just like we've done with our International Space Station. Mm -hmm. You have a space launch uh, system called the SLS. It's part of the Artemis program. And uh, it's pretty much run by NASA rather than a pure commercial in, uh, uh, endeavor. You have contracts like with Boeing to do parts of it. It's going if I may say so, really badly. What's the problem there? It's not going badly at all. As a matter of fact, we're going to launch on August the 29th. It's but the didn't first... you have to pull back the Boeing rockets, and hasn't it been at least a year or two behind schedule? Your predecessor said they should just shut it down. Well, it's more than a year or two behind schedule, but so was the James Webb Space Telescope. It was 10 years behind the original schedule. And look what it's done. Walter, all this boils down. Space is hard. 
This is tough stuff. This is technical gee whiz stuff. And uh, so too, uh, we are going to launch the largest, most powerful rocket ever. Uh, it's the first test flight, no humans on board. We always try to do that. And uh, then two years later, we will launch the first crew to the moon. And then a year after that, uh, we will go into lunar orbit and uh, rendezvous with a lander and we'll go down in late 25, land and bring the crew home safely. But it's a pretty complex system for 2025 getting to the moon. It, uh, it requires both the system you've talked about and then a rendezvous with, I think, a SpaceX-built uh, lunar lander. Are you pretty confident that by 2025 we'll do it? Yes, and there again is another uh, example of sharing the exploration of space with commercial companies. And for example, on the first competition, we're getting this lander at half the price. Uh, SpaceX won the competition. Uh, we are going to have another competition for a similar lander, and so that we'll have two landers that we'll be able to choose from as we are landing on the moon. Uh, you got reauthorized, congratulations, sir, this past week or so, inside the CHIPS Act. Uh, does that legislation give you what you wanted? And tell us what uh, we all spent a lot of time focusing on the production of microchips, that part of the act. Tell us what's in that act that's going to help NASA. Uh, when you say it that way, reauthorized, sound like I've been reborn, and uh, uh, I'm ready. Uh, NASA is. Uh, NASA's in a new era. This is the golden era of, of space exploration. And yes, uh, that law uh, memorializes in law such things as the space station all the way to 2030, uh, a bunch of uh, nits and nats, uh, technical things that were needed. And it, the NASA bill is attached to the competition bill, the Competitiveness Act, which is primarily aimed at us being competitive in the international arena, specifically with China, on so many things, but not the least of which is chips, the silicon wafers uh, of being able to have them produced here in the good old USA instead of in China. You know, China has announced a whole lot of breakthroughs in quantum uh, technology, including things that would be able to use satellites and space for encrypted uh, telecommunications. Is that why you see the CHIPS Act and the NASA reauthorization and things going together? What are you worried about there? You answered your own questions. The short answer is yes. Uh, you not only want to protect yourself from uh, a manufacturer that may want to do you harm uh, from a defective chip, but you also want to make sure you have the available supply. Look what these uh, small chips do to our economy. They're in everything. They're certainly in your cell phone. They're certainly in your car. They're in your refrigerator, even your washing machine. So uh, it's necessary to the American style of living, indeed the world's style of living, in almost every day aspect of every moment of our waking lives. We want those chips manufactured here so that we have that available supply and a secure supply. In some ways, it seems to me, the most inspiring thing about space exploration is answering the really big questions, like how did this universe begin? So tell us, what are you learning from the James Webb Telescope and how does that justify us going into this space? Well, there's always this quest that we have to try to understand who we are, where we are, uh, what are we in this vast cosmos known as the universe? And now we have a telescope that is so perfectly designed with such precision that we can look back and have already looked back 
over 13 billion years ago. Uh, it will go back as far as 13 and a half billion years. And we know that the universe is 13.8 billion years ago when it all began. Uh, what we are learning, uh, just think of the enormous distances. Uh, light travels at 186,000 miles per second. That light that we have captured in this telescope has been traveling for 13.1 billion years, and it will go back to 13 and a half. Now, that's enough to blow your mind right there. But with the precision of the telescope, we are seeing how it formed. The first gases, the first dust clouds, the swirling that occurred that eventually things start forming, and then they start bumping and crashing into each other and start forming objects in a galaxy. And then this galaxy is crashing into that galaxy. I just saw a picture yesterday, it'll be public very soon, of a galaxy that has been hit by another galaxy and how it looks after that galaxy, many, many millions of light years away. Uh, so these are some of the things that we're going to learn, but we're going to learn things that we don't even know what the questions are. That's how exciting this whole thing is. Administrator Bill Nelson, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Walter.